so here the aim will be to write a matlab program and execute the same for performing power spectrum estimation using welch method we require first of all a signal for which the power estimation according to the welch methodology we can implement here so here let us modularize this section this is to generate this is generating the input signal so this is a signal we have to generate and then the power spectrum estimation accordingly we shall do here so as we have this discrete domain preferred here so for discrete time representation we require one variable let us have it defined as small n that will start with the value 0 and extend to the value 1000 here with the interval of one unit so these are the integers we have 0 to 1000 here and taking this particular discrete time parameter here let us have capital a is the discrete time signal that we are going to generate so we are having it to be a composite signal randomness is also there one of the component and next the components are of the trigonometric functions the repeated ones here so let us have defined it as 2 multiplied to the sin function within the parenthesis we have 0.12 multiplied by the constant pi further multiplied by the discrete time variable small n here which is further added to another trigonometric component here sin function which is having 0.28 multiplied to the constant pi holding the value 3.14 further multiplied to small n the discrete time parameter here so small n discrete time parameter pi is a constant here and now to these two trigonometric functions which are added together we add certain randomness with the keyword randn and inside the parenthesis the dimensions we set equal to the small n the discrete time parameter here so small n we have defined from 0 to 1000 here so we end this matlab syntax with the help of a semicolon here and by the next line we will accept certain input information while executing this matlab program and this input is to be accepted from the user right from the command window here so let us define one variable that is called as n fft here as we are going to take the help of the welch methodology here we need the fast fourier transformation implemented here so for that purpose the order we have to obtain so let us make the use of matlab keyword input within the parenthesis and a pair of single quotes there we expect to print a message that is to type in the fft size here so we accept the concerned input from the user here whether the fft size is 8 whether it is 16 whether it is 34 64 that way the user will provide us the input and accordingly our matlab program will execute and produce the result the result is the power spectrum estimation here now for the welch methodology there it is requirement of selecting a particular window here so let us assign the window variable as hamming type here so for hamming we provide the input argument 256 here next to that we also require one user defined information that is also to be accepted from the command prompt here so that variable we define to be overlap so the amount of overlap we need to know from the user that is expected for processing this particular signal so 
let us again make the use of input keyword and within a pair of parentheses and inside a pair of single quotes we will like to print a message type in the amount of overlap type in the amount of overlap at the end semicolon here and now here we are going to call the function which is executing the wells methodology for power spectrum estimation and as the output arguments there are the two variables that it is p x axis and here we have small f so as per the matlab syntax here we have that method p wells here output arguments we have already provided on the left hand side and the input arguments are the signal which is to be processed so in the above step we have that particular signal defined as the variable capital a then the fft size information is also to be provided that we have folded in n fft variable here then here it is another input argument the number 2 then the type of the window that we have defined to be of having type and the amount of overlap here that is also the user defined that we are accepting from the command prompt here so this is the very important line line number 14 where we are calling the wells methodology from the matlab directory here so as this particular syntax is giving us pxx to be the power spectral density after estimating according to the wells methodology here now it is time to have a display of the input and the output in terms of the power spectral density here so here i modularize the rest of the lines as with this comment display of input signal and its estimated power spectrum so first of all we shall have a display of the input signal so for the display purpose the simplest matlab command is plot and the input argument is the signal that we have generated that we have named as the variable capital a so here we will limit the x axis range so that will be from 0 to 1000 here and then to this particular plot we shall have a nomenclature to both of the axis here so let us have the x axis labeled so on the x axis there it will be the discrete time variable small n index variable and to the y axis here we are having the display of amplitude here next to that there shall be a short title to this plot so the title is input signal so this is what the nomenclature to the particular plot of the input signal generated here then after the welch methodology is executed for power spectral estimation in a separate matlab window that is why i am making the use of figure as a keyword here then the use of plot command where the input argument is f by 2 comma 10 multiplied by the multiplication is by the asterisk in the matlab environment log to the best ten of we have capital p sub x x x here so p x x is the power spectral density and we are having the logarithm of it multiplied by 10 the base of the logarithm is 10 here so this is having the information plotted in terms of decibels here now for labeling to access here so we have the x label 
so to the x axis we are providing the nomenclature as slash omega to print the omega sign here the greek symbol and this is in the numerator whereas in the denominator we have pi so slash pi is the syntax at the end we are having the semicolon so after labeling the x axis let us have labeling of the y axis here so to the y axis we write power spectrum and as this power spectrum is in decibels comma we provide db as the symbol of decibels here and next to that after this labeling two axes here we provide the title to the output plot here so inside the parenthesis we have a pair of square brackets where we write overlap is equal to the overlap is followed by num to star here so the keyword is num to str within the bracket we have the variable named overlap that is accepting the input from command window here and after that we are having the samples here so this will be the last line of this matlab program here. so let us first of all save this matlab program so i just save this with the name program as we are here in the 8th chapter underscore 8 and this is the 17th topic so underscore 17 dot m will be the file extension we save it so this is the matlab folder on the desktop and here you see the file that has been generated here and see the label that it was untitled in the editor window now it has the name program underscore 8 underscore 17 dot m here now it's time to run this particular program so as i run this particular program on the command window that it was initially with clear screen here there it is a message printed type in the effective size so let us for example have the information to be 8 and after hitting enter it is asking another information type in the amount of overlap so initially let us have it 64 as i hit enter here you see there are two matlab figures have got popped up here so they have been labeled figure 1 and figure 2 i keep them side by side so in the first figure figure 1 you see input signal here on the horizontal axis you see the markings from 0 100 200 300 this way up to 1000 we have and the display type variable small n is also displayed here whereas the vertical axis is from minus 6 to plus 6 at the middle there is the zero amplitude level and this is the amplitude information as printed here so this is the input signal which is given to the welch methodology so we have the x and y informations so in this particular plot and now in the figure 2 we have the overlap is equal to 64 samples for this power spectrum as you see on the vertical axis in terms of decibel plotted against omega the angular frequency divided by the variable pi here so i just close these windows run this program again so this time let the fft size that it is asking type in the fft size keep it the same 8 and now type in the amount of overlap so this time let us increase the overlap let it be 128 here so as i hit enter again the two matlab windows have got generated that i have separated it is the same input signal so the input signal is not user defined we have a fixed logic as we have developed now for the overlap of 128 samples here you see the changes on to the vertical axis readings for the power spectrum in terms of decibels here now as i close this particular 
windows and run this again so it is asking the information for fft size this time i increase it from 8 to 16 the overlap let us say this is initially 64 so again we have the two matlab figures now you see for the given details from the user from the command window you see in the output window the power spectrum has a different nature as compared to the earlier case here so this is for the overlap of the 64 samples here so this is the corresponding plot as i run it again for the 16 to be the fft size if i increase the overlap amount to 256 and hit enter so here we see the nature of the power spectral density seems to be the same but the decibel levels of the power spectrum have got changed according to the changes into the inputs from the command window here